Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Maher Nasser, and I'm the director of the outreach division in the Department of Global Communications at the United Nations. We're very pleased to have you at the official opening of the online exhibition, The Forgotten, Forgotten Victims, the Nazi Genocide uh, of the Roma and the Sinti. We welcome our speakers today, His Excellency Ambassador Jonathan Allen, the Charge Aid Affairs of the Permanent Mission of the United Kingdom to the United Nations, Dr. Barbara Warnock, Senior Curator and Head of Education at the Wiener Holocaust Library, and finally, a survivor and activist, Ms. Rita Prigmore. This exhibition draws on the rich archival collection of the Wiener Holocaust Library, revealing through photographs and official documents the fate of the Roma and the Sinti at the hands of the Nazis and their collaborators. The exhibition plays an important role in deepening our understanding and knowledge about a period of history that is less well known than it should be. The exhibition illustrates the history of prejudice and systemic discrimination that facilitated the persecution and mass murder of the Roma people and reminds us and reminds the viewer of the intractable, incalculable toll that laws, bigotry, acts of discrimination have on those it aims to marginalize and dehumanize. The Nazis and their collaborators murdered an estimated 500,000 Roma, half a million people. This exhibition gives the num this number faces and names. The exhibition serves to remind us of the importance of bearing witness to the past, of learning as much as we can about the past and the strategies of victims to retain their sense of dignity. The exhibition also reminds us that the end of the war did not mean the end to anti-Roma racism and prejudice. After the war, the Roma found little sympathy, let alone acknowledgement of the crimes that had been committed against them. Decade after decade, Roma have had to endure formal and informal dismissal and denial of their history and displays of disrespect of the memory of those who were murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators. Just as the Nazis did not invent anti-Semitism and encourage the age old prejudice against Jewish people in all in, in justifying their eventual genocidal actions against Jewish people. So the Nazis exploited the prejudice and discrimination against the Roma that had existed for centuries in Europe. Central to Nazi ideology was the belief in race and racism, and the actions against Jewish people and the Roma were grounded in an ideology that viewed both groups as biologically and inherently undesirable. Just as the Nazis employed and encouraged age-old stereotypes of Jewish people, so they used stereotypes of the Roma to encourage prejudice and justify state policies and discrimination. This exhibition, through its careful chronic choice of photographs, ca counters the myths of the Roma as a, the exotic, the other, the unassimilable, assimilable, and as a homogeneous group. This exhibition has been adapted for an online presentation. We thank the Wiener Holocaust Library who curated the exhibition for working with the Holocaust and the United Nations Outreach Program to bring the online version of the exhibition to the United Nations. In 2005, the General Assembly of the United Nations mandated the establishment of an outreach program on the Holocaust and the United Nations that would institute measures to mobilize civil society for Holocaust remembrance and education in order to help prevent future acts of genocide. The theme of the, uh, for the outreach program 2020, 75 years after Auschwitz, Holocaust education and remembrance for global justice. Holocaust education includes education about the victims of the Nazis. This exhibition asks us to remember the forgotten victims to remember, among other events, the 2nd of August 1944, when the Nazis murdered every person in the so-called gypsy camp of Auschwitz. We're challenged to remember the countless acts, acts of persecution and murder 
attempts to annihilate not only the body of the people, but their culture, heritage, and their memory. Through remembering, through learning, justice is served. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, His Excellency Ambassador Jonathan Allen of the Permanent Mission of the, uh, of the United Kingdom to the United Nations. Jonathan. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, to you, Maha. Thank you to all of the um, colleagues uh, at uh, Department of Global Com uh, Communication and to the Wiener Holocaust Library uh, for bringing us together today um, and for bringing alive the stories of the Roma and Sinti communities of Europe as an important reminder of why never forget, never again should never be far from our minds and remain a constant guide for the work we do as member states, whether that's here in New York or whether it's on the ground in some very difficult and challenging circumstances, which I know a number of colleagues from the UN and wider NGO family deal with uh, day in, day out. Let me also thank Ms. Barbara Warnock for her curation of the exhibition and to Rita Prigmore uh, for being with us today. And I look very much forward to the insight uh, that your experience is uniquely placed to give us. We often say it, but we should never be, uh, never restrain ourselves from repeating it. But the Holocaust must remain etched on our collective memory. We must never let its horrors be forgotten. We must never fail to teach our children about the evils that people are capable of. The persecution and murder of as many as 500,000 people from the Roma and Sinti communities during the Second World War is rightly referred to as the forgotten Holocaust. This is particularly true in how after the war, survivors and relatives of victims had to fight to obtain recognition and compensation for the oppression that they went through. And there are important lessons for us today as the international community fights the common enemy of COVID-19 and the social shocks, the economic shocks that accompany it. We can see from the exhibition what life was like for Roma and Sinti people living in Germany and Austria prior to the Second World War and the beginnings of genocidal policies starting from 1940, as well as the post-war lives and legacies for Roma and Sinti. And it's important that the exhibition reflects, as it does, on the discrimination and prejudice still faced by Roma and Sinti people across Europe today. So I do think that the exhibition comes at an important time. The global pandemic has triggered an increase in racism and xenophobia, leading Michelle Bachelet to label racism and xenophobia as contagious killers too, as this rise in destructive ideas risks undermining what we have collectively built in the aftermath of the Holocaust. And I think the Secretary General's plan of action on hate speech sets out the scale of the problem we're currently facing. Racist and xenophobic narratives are on the rise and are proliferating in the online space. History brought to life in this exhibition shows how hate speech has been a precursor to atrocity crimes, including genocide over the years. And I also want to commend at this point the Department for Global Communications for their work, their important work through the Holocaust and United Nations Outreach Program and more recently the Verified Initiative to reaffirm the lessons of history and the founding values of the UN and ensure this is carried through the digital space. I'm very glad personally to be here today. Uh, my, uh, I think, last overseas job was as our British ambassador to Bulgaria, where there are large Roma communities. And this is an issue which is therefore very close to my heart. Um, I, I know that the Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues, uh, Fernand de Varennes, the Varen highlighted concerns this April at the alarming rise of hate speech, blame and scapegoating of the Roma during this pandemic. This has not only been online, but in some instances across Europe, this has been seen from state officials and police operations targeting Roma neighbourhoods during the pandemic. And I'm afraid it is a sad thing, but we do see uh, that in some at some times and in some societies, it can be considered socially acceptable to express racist sentiments. And I think it's really important that we guard against a sense of other. Whenever there are racist attacks or, uh, or discrimination or even genocide around the world, it tends to begin with an acceptance uh, of a majority of other and instead instilling a fear of others. Uh, which often dehumanizes 
uh, individuals. And I think we should be doing everything we can to instead of allowing in our societies a sense of other to develop, instead a sense of together uh, to develop. It's really important that we tackle this wherever it is. So I would urge all governments to redouble their efforts for the protection of human rights and the promotion of equality and non-discrimination for all, including Roma minorities in their fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. And we need to remain constantly vigilant. The targeting of an individual because of their race or perceived difference, otherness, has no place in a modern world and in modern societies. But we must remain constantly vigilant to ensure that we never again slide towards a future Holocaust. That might sound alarmist, but it doesn't take much for things, small things that happen at the beginning to lead to devastating consequences, however they might uh, take root. So let me finish by thanking uh, the organisers again, apologising that I can't stay uh, for the rest of the presentation and wishing all very the very best to the uh, to the exhibition. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Your Excellency. I, I know you have a very busy schedule with the Security Council and, and actually we're especially grateful that you have taken time out from that engagement to be with us. We, we certainly appreciate your engagement and, and your really uh, thoughtful remarks on this topic. Uh, please feel free to, to leave us. I know that you have a very busy program, but we're, we're very grateful to, to have had you uh, for the, these introductory remarks. Uh, it is now my pleasure to welcome our second speaker, Dr. Barbara Warnock. Dr. Warnock is the Education Director and Senior Curator at the Wiener Holocaust Library and the curator of the exhibition that we are opening today. Dr. Warnock, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nasser, for your introduction and for your very thoughtful reflections. And thank you to, to Ambassador Allen. Um, and thank you to the UN for inviting me here today. And I'm so pleased that Rita Prigmore is going to be speaking and very honoured to be speaking alongside her. And her story is one of those told in the exhibition. So um, this online exhibition at the UN is based on an exhibition that was held at the Wiener Holocaust Library between October 2019 and March 2020. And I'm just going to talk to you a little bit today about the Wiener Holocaust Library and its archival collections from which this exhibition is drawn. The Wiener Holocaust Library was founded by Dr. Alfred Wiener, originally as the Jewish Central Information Office, and in the 1920s and early 30s, Wiener was um, um, a campaigner against anti-Semitism and an anti-Nazi campaigner. He relocated in 1933 to Amsterdam, where he founded the Jewish Central Information Office to gather evidence and information about what was happening in Nazi Germany and particularly about the position of Jews there. In 1939, the organisation relocated to London and became known as Dr. Wiener's Library. Our collections have continued to grow since that time. We've gathered evidence about the Holocaust, um, eyewitness accounts of the Holocaust from across Europe. And in recent decades, we've also gathered the collections of hundreds of Jewish refugee families who came to Britain in the 30s and 40s. Um, could you change slide, please? The Wiener Holocaust Library has long had an interest in the persecution and genocide that was perpetrated against Europe's Roma and Sinti populations. And this article on screen now was published in the Wiener Library Bulletin in 1950. And in it, the editor of the bulletin, C.C. Ahrensfeld, challenges the idea that was still common in Germany at that point that um, Roma and Sinti or Gypsies were only persecuted because they were criminal, not in fact on racial grounds. So the Wiener Library has had a long interest in this subject and collected material on it since the 50s. And it's from these collections that we draw this exhibition. Could you change the slide, please? So 
So one very important collection that we've drawn upon for the exhibition is the Kenrick collection. And this is an extensive collection of documents, including accounts um, based on the interviews with uh, Roman Sinti survivors. And this collection of material was gathered together by Donald Kenrick and Grattan Puxon in the late 1960s in what was the first um, major research project to try and gather evidence from across Europe about the genocide. And the Wiener Library part funded that uh, research project and Donald Kenrick deposited some of the material that he'd gathered with us. So this has been a very important um, source for the exhibition. Change slide, please. Alongside the Kenrick collection, we also have evidence about the persecution and genocide of Sinti and Roma in other parts of the Wiener Library's archive. So in the 1950s, Wiener Library staff gathered hundreds of eyewitness accounts to the Holocaust from across Europe. And a, a small number of these accounts are from Sinti and Roma survivors. Um, a small number of these accounts are from Jewish survivors who actually describe persecution that they witnessed directed against Roma and Sinti. And this particular um, quite um, long account that is displayed on, on screen is that of Hermine Horvath, who gave her account to the Wiener Library in 1958 of persecution she experienced in Austria and then later in Auschwitz. And it's a rather remarkable um, account of her experiences. Change slide, please. We also have in our collections a complete set of the documents entered in evidence at the Nuremberg War Crimes Trial. Dr. Wiener actually helped um, the Nuremberg War Crimes Trial with some of the evidence. And within these documents, even though um, the persecution of Roma was not prosecuted specifically as a crime at Nuremberg, these documents do sometimes contain evidence about what occurred. So in this particular document, um, Heinrich Himmler uh, talked about how in the German Reich, uh, the evacuation and isolation of Jews and Roma had been accomplished. Um, by which he meant their deportation to ghettos and their murder in the East. Change slide, please. We also have in our collections a, a massive digital archive, the International Tracing Service Digital Archive. The originals are in Germany and we have Britain's only copy. And this contains millions of documents, millions of mainly Nazi documents. Um, and this archive is used to trace the fates of, of those missing and lost and persecuted during the war and the Holocaust. And it has very extensive information about the persecution of Roma and Sinti and a great many individual stories, including that of German Sinti um, man Hans Braun. Um, and the, his documents um, that we looked into for this exhibition reveal the difficulties he faced in obtaining compensation for the persecution he'd experienced after the war. Change slide, please. We were able in this exhibition to cross-reference our collections quite effectively in many cases. Hans Brown gave um, an account, a testimony really, of his experiences to the library in the 80s. We also had tracing service documents on him. We have in the collection this very striking photograph um, of Margareta Krauss taken in the 1960s in East Germany, and she was a survivor of Auschwitz and other camps. In the Kenrick collection, um, we also have an account of um, Margareta Krauss's experience based on an interview with her. And then in the International Tracing Service archive for this exhibition, we did a bit of research and found documents referring to her and were actually able to uncover more evidence than, than had previously come to light about um, the horrific experiences she endured, including medical experiment, forced medical experimentation. Change side, please. The striking photograph of Margareta Krauss is one of the photographs we've got in the collection. Um, but some of the, the, the photographs that we have in the collection are somewhat problematic. And this is perhaps typical of photographs of Roma and Sinti from the Nazi era. So many of the photographs taken of Roma and Sinti in this era are taken by um, Nazi perpetrators or people um, with questionable links or sympathies with the Nazi regime. 
And the two black and white photographs here are examples of that. And the photograph um, towards the front um, is, is not from our collection, but it, it's from the Bundesarchiv, but it's another example of a photograph taken by the Nazi authorities. So it can make it somewhat problematic. And we had to think very careful about the use of images here. And um, Professor Eve Rosenhaft of Liverpool University has produced a very thoughtful blog on the subject of photographic representations of Roma and Sinti at this time that um, you can find on our website. So um, I just um, finally want to give thanks to a few more people. So I'd like to um, particularly thank Tracy Peterson um, and Yolga Olga Yatskovitz at the UN for all of their support with this exhibition. They've been absolutely brilliant and I've often been a bit sort of harassed, but they've been very patient and have done a wonderful job with this exhibition. I'd also like to thank my colleagues Elise Bath, Christ Christine Schmidt and Torsten Jugel for their support on this exhibition, as well as Professor Eve Rosenhaft, the Roma support group here in London and the organisation in Britain, René Kassan, who all also provided um, support in this exhibition. Um, so yes, finally, just thank you very much for having me and we're really delighted at the Wiener Holocaust Library to be able to show this exhibition. Thank you very thank much, you very Dr. Warnock, for guiding us through some of the issues related to the exhibition and sharing with us the ongoing context of struggle for recognition of the history of the Roma and the Sinti. The exhibition allows us to learn about the stories of the families, the mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, grandparents, friends, whose lives were irrevocably changed. Through these personal stories, we can begin to consider the loss to the world wrote by the Nazis and their collaborators in their campaign against the Roma. Today, we have a very special guest, Ms. Rita Prigmore. Rita's story begins with her mother's brave decision to defy the orders to submit to forced sterilization. Yes, forced sterilization. Rita, we're privileged and honored to have you with us to share your family's story. Please. The floor is yours. Thank you. I'm happy to be here to add to the misery and remembrance the wrong that was done to us, so it should never happen again. In, in a time when Mama was pregnant with my sister and I, she didn't know that she was having twins. She was supposed to go to the hospital and be sterilized at the age of 21. At the examination, they found out that she had twins, two little girls. She then had the opportunity and the say so from the Nazis to carry us out. If she signs a paper to give us up for medical experience, identical twins. Mom. Yes, most of our people were already in a concentration camp. At the day when we were born, they took us from my mama. They did experience on us. My sister Rolanda died at the age of eight. She was eight months old. They were trying to dye our eyes. At that time, the professor that did those examinations and those tests on us was Dr. Heide here in Würzburg. It's kind of hard to talk about. And uh, when my mama went in to see us again, she found only one little girl, me. Rolanda was dead. She laid in her little bed with the bandit around her head. Mama panicked and stole me out of the children's ward. She ran through the city into the church and gave me to Santa Rita to take care of me. I was baptized there. By the time Mama got back home, what the grandparents were waiting, the Nazis was there and took me again. I had a band-aid on my head. 
They took me and my family didn't know where I was until 1944. Since all those times and all my life, I have had complications of the experience. It will be with me for a whole lifetime. This is the good memory we have of the time of the Nazis, what was done to us because we were gypsies. Roma or Jews. It shall never happen again. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Ms. Prigmore, for your generosity and courage in sharing your family's story and history. You have helped us to remember the impact that laws and actions have on people's lives and why we need to work together to build a world in which dignity of all is assured and protected, not only by individual actions of righteousness, but by the legal system and in every institution of the land. The exhibition is planned to coincide with the 2nd of August commemoration of the murder of the Roma in Auschwitz will be accessible online at the United Nations exhibitions, exhibition webpage. We place the link now in the chat bar. We warmly invite you to visit the exhibition, to take your time to read and learn. We're very proud to have the exhibition as an expression of our commitment to the history of the Roma and the Sinti during the Nazis regime rule, and a commitment to supporting the right to lives lived in dignity for all. I hereby declare the exhibition open. Thank you, keep well, and goodbye.